It was kind of comfort to, me, to us because it's it's just two girls having a good time talking about, uh, you know, asking about their bartender and, and just just being just being girls on their way to uh, the grub truck. Look at that! Bad property. Hey, who's the owner uh, or lives here? Who's here? Um, I can go get them real quick. Okay, please, please. <laughs> Grizzlies and welcome back to another episode of Grizzly True Crime. My name is Gisela K. Happy Sunday to you if you are watching live with me and if you're a replay watcher then thank you so much. Uh, if you're not yet subscribed please subscribe. Make sure that you've got the bell on so you know when I'm next going live or uploading something. It seems in this case there's news all the time. Like every hour there's something happening and I'm so grateful that you are here with me to look at today's updates. There's no new updates today from the Moscow Police Department. But we've got some other updates like that surveillance footage and some body cam footage. And we're going to go through all of that together. So again, thank you so much for being here. And let's have a look at the very first thing, which is this. I'm sure you've seen this in other places. Um, I've also been looking at this and just listening to make sure, you know, does it sound legit? It does. It does sound legit. And thankfully... Uh, Kaylee's dad's also done a recent interview and he said the family actually had this early on already. Um, they were reached out to directly and it actually gave him a sense of comfort because he was like, well, you know, it's just two girls talking uh, about the bartender. That's why I'm like, oh, so, so Adam, who the whole internet is now going after, he's the next one, you know, Adam is apparently the bartender speculatively at the corner club, right? Okay. So, uh, thank you all for being here. I see there's over a thousand people here now. Sorry if it's a little bit early for some of you. I just wanted to make sure that for anyone watching the World Cup and things like that, that uh, I accommodate that as well. Thank you so much, Tom. You say big news every day on this. Yep. Big news and lots of fear, of course. You know, a lot of anxiety because this case is absolutely shocking. So, yes. <laughs> 6 a.m. Yep. <laughs> Run the World says, it's only 6 a.m. Plenty of time today for an arrest. Thank you for tuning in from wherever you're tuning in from. So here they say, let me make it bigger for you. Idaho murder surveillance image appears to show Kaylee Consolves and Maddie Mogan hours before the slangs. So the intention of a Facebook group sharing this post was so that they can kind of... Um, I guess help out the white hoodie guy. I'm like, listen, this guy didn't just arrive at the food truck, like just, you know, intercepting their path. And there he stood staring at them and then they left. They were walking with him before the time. So that is helpful to know because otherwise, you know, everybody assumes that he just, he just like randomly arrived at the food truck. Um, he probably walked back from the corner club with them. If it is Jack S., um, well, and if he if it's true that he got kicked out of the corner club, then I guess that raises a couple of red flags of like, well, how long did he stand outside then? You know, but maybe he really was being protective. I don't know. OK, Kid Mac says it is confirmed Adam no longer works at the bar. Very interesting. Kid Mac, if you have some sources or if anyone here has some, you know, um, article sources, information about who that Adam is, because I'm still not clear on if it's the same Adam that lived with uh, Jack D., Kaylee's ex, which is just a few houses down from the house where the murders happen. I'm still not sure if it's the same, Adam. I just saw, oh, okay, okay, they're talking about the bartender. So there's that. Okay, welcome, Shay Wizzle, to membership. Um, thank you as well, mods, uh, patrons, and members for being here. Really, really appreciate that as well. Okay, so here they say, 
Idaho murders, surveillance image appears to show Kaylee Consolves and Maddie Mogan hours before the slayings. So I will play this in a moment. I just first want to read this to you. They say exclusive, newly disclosed surveillance video said to have been taken early on November 13th appears to show slain University of Idaho students Kaylee Consolves and Maddie Mogan walking with a man in downtown Moscow hours before the quadruple stabbing in a rental house steps away from the campus. The woman appeared to be wearing the same clothes that Gonsalves and Mogan were seen sporting that same evening on video outside a nearby food truck. The man walking with them is also wearing clothes that look like those on a man seen at the food truck whom police have said is not a suspect. Maddie, what did you say to Adam? A woman asks as the group walks under an outdoor surveillance camera. Like, I told Adam everything, the second woman replies. Thank you, Vicky. That was part of my intro. Yes, I really appreciate your super sticker, and we will look at that interview as well. Thank you so much. So, interesting here. You know that, yep, they were walking together, and there he had his cap on backwards there as well. You can see the white hoodie and everything. They say screenshots from residence camera and local food truck in the early hours of November 13th show University of Idaho victims Kaylee Consolves and Maddie Mogan hours before they were killed, along with two friends at an off-campus rental home. Okay, so that's what we know so far. Someone earlier was saying, why is everyone focusing on Maddie and Kaylee? I don't think the intention is just to focus on them. But what I think is interesting is that there's still not much information about what uh, Zana and Ethan were up to between 9 and 1.45, right? Oh, wow. Okay, Kid Mac says, a guy called the bar and asked for Adam the bartender. It's the same Adam as Jack's roommate. Wow, thank you for clearing that up. That that's interesting. Wow. Okay. So it's the same, the same Adam. I was wondering now, are they going to be, you know, like there's three Jacks and a Jake and a Jeremy and a Joe and in <laughs> and, and, and now, okay, what else do we get? We've got an Adam. Are there two Adams? How many Adams are there? You know how it goes in these cases. Okay. So here they say, the first woman's voice appears to match that of Consolves on a TikTok. The video was provided to Fox News Digital by Christine Cameron and Alina Smith, the creators and administrators of the University of Idaho Murders Case Discretion Facebook group. They told Fox News Digital it was provided to them by a Moscow resident who previously submitted it to police and believes making it public can provide greater context about the incident. Fox News Digital reviewed the video but is only using stills to protect the source's privacy. Here you can watch it. I'm sure it's on this link that I've got here. According to police, Consolves and Mogan left the Corner Club bar around 1.30 a.m. on November 13th and then walked to the food truck where they ordered and then hitched a ride back to their King Road home. Cameron Smith, whose group has more than 90,000 members, including myself. <laughs> I don't know if you guys are you also part of it. Okay. Um, I'm part of all these groups as well, discussing everything. Sometimes there's some interesting information in there as well. Okay. Um, closely following the case, provided the video claiming it shows the young woman in the hoodie was with Consolves and Mogan before, sorry, the young man in the hoodie was with them before appearing on the food truck video. He is one of many people who have been subject to online speculation surrounding the case, which prompted police to warn web sleuths on December 9th that online harassment and threats can be criminal acts. I don't think it was only about that. I think it's about a lot of things, including harass harassing neighbors and you know, even mainstream media doing that, as we saw, we can all uh, scrutinize those couple of minutes at the food truck. But we just have to remember that there was an entire evening before this, Cameron told Fox News Digital. There's more than just that one timestamp that we have into that evening. And still, I would think that, oh, my word, the, <laughs> the footage from the corner club, if there is any footage from there, that would be interesting as well, right? I mean, what what happened there? Who was there? The group arrived at a food truck around 1.40 a.m. and Gonsalves and Mogan returned home just before 2 a.m., according to the police. People are drawing the conclusion that he's creepy from those few minutes, and I want to give a bigger picture, Cameron said. He wasn't just staring at them. He was with them prior. So good to know as well, to have the confirmation. The other victims, uh, roommate Zana Kernodal and her boyfriend Ethan Chapin, both 20, had returned to the house around 1.45 a.m., according to police. Between 3 and 4 a.m., investigators say they were killed with what police believed, you know, was a fixed blade knife. Authorities said last week that they believe a 2011 to 2013 white Hyundai Elantra spotted near the King Road house around the time of the slayings may lead them to critical information on the case. 
They are also seeking more information about the evening of November 12th and early the following morning. Yes, of course, especially with what what uh, Zana and Ethan were up to between 9 and 1.45. Police have also asked the public to come forward with anything unusual downtown where Gonzalez and Morgan were seen or related to a frat party at the Sigma Chi House 200 yards away from the crime scene where Kernodal and Chapin had spent much of the evening. As of Saturday, police have not announced any arrests or named any suspects. Police did not immediately respond to Fox News Digital's request for comment. Okay. Sorry, I'm just hearing if there's noise in the background here. All right. So that is what we have. Let's let's play this. I wonder if I could boost this. Maybe. Let's try it. Okay, here we go. One more time. Okay, so um, it sounds like Kaylee's saying, Maddie, what did you say to Adam? And Maddie's response is, I told Adam everything. So that is what, that's all we have from that clip there. Yeah, the grizzly boost in progress, you guys. <laughs> grizzly boost. It did help a bit, huh? It actually did boost the sound really nicely. So that was that was great. So we could hear a little more clearly. Um, what do you guys think about it? Th Thriving and Beyond says, what an interesting sound bite. Right? I don't really know what to think about it. It's just good to have just a little bit more of a timeline. of like, okay, so this guy was walking with them, probably. You know, and he was seen before that already. Okay. So that is what we have there. And then we've got um, Kaylee's dad gives an update on Idaho murder case as Christmas approaches. And man, it was, of course, sad to hear, like, what are you going to do for Christmas? And he said, we can't really have a Christmas. I mean, it's just not at all. I mean, it's silly to say it's not going to be the same. Obviously, it's just so sad over, you know, this holiday season coming up, Christmas and New Year's and all that. Well, wow. okay, so let's have a listen to this. Well, as their family's attorney, Shannon Gray. Um, Steve, thanks so much for joining the program again. I made a promise to you that uh, our audience would stay on this case and not let this case die. Uh, we had a cooling off period last week out of respect for law enforcement to bring the temperature down a little bit. What new can you tell us, Steve? I know we got this new surveillance video that was released by our digital team today. Um, what can you tell us? Um, that film, to the family, we've had that film for a while. Uh, mm -hmm. I believe the business reached out to us directly and um, after they had given it to the police. So it, it was kind of comfort to, to us because it's it's just two girls having a good time talking about, uh, you know, asking about their bartender and, and just, just, being, just being girls on their way to uh, the grub truck. Yeah, so you don't suspect that this guy, Adam, that's stated in the video is somehow a suspect or anything like that. You guys have known about this this video for a while. We have, and we asked, and we did the obvious due diligence when we looked into that, and uh, uh, we, their bartender, we and pretty, it was pretty clear that this individual was not a part of uh, the investigation as far as a suspect. Good copy. So, Steve, what can you tell us about the investigation thus far. We, we, we've heard about the car details being released as well. Is there anything that we can do to, to get some answers for you guys so we can get this suspect, whoever it is, in custody? Um, they've, they've kind of informed us through uh, communications that this, uh, they've checked all the easiest paths 
So like if this individual had this car registered to his name and it was just something very quick that they could just look up in the area and, and go right to his house, they've done all the, the due diligence there. They've done all that. So now they're reaching out and they're going to look to the community, see if uh, this individual borrowed this car. Um, you know, it doesn't appear that it, it, it's something that they have real easy access to. So he may have ran and they really pushed the narrative saying, hey, if we can get these guys to focus on something that's really helpful, which is this car, and, um, you know, find out if somebody says, hey, you know, that, that, that car that looks a lot like mine, I'm going to come forward and just volunteer my information. And then, you know, they can figure out if somebody else had borrowed it or if it, heck, who knows. You know, Steve, we talked about this off air. Um, but one of the reasons why I want to bring this up is because I think it's critical to this investigation. Uh, these, a lot of these young people were teenagers, and there may have been some illicit activity that was minor that they would have gotten in trouble for, and it may be preventing them from coming forward. What can you tell these young people to kind of motivate them to give up some answers? Don't worry about all the petty stuff. Four innocent lives were, were lost here. Yeah, I, I want kids to understand that this is such a big uh, case that 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 these guys have their hands full. Um, I wanted to go out there and tell everyone we support the Gonzalez family, support the local police officers we, so much so that we want them to be able to work on this case. I know that they this is way over the normal workload that they normally have. Plus, they have patrols. They have to patrol now. This guy's not caught. So. Um, you know, there were some rumors that I that I called these officers uh, a, a coward. That was not for these officers. That was for a lawyer that was standing in between what the lawyers, what the officers would like to release and what is actually being released. And I, I called that individual. And this was just about coming forward and saying that the profile is a male. You know, mm -hmm. I feel like at a month we could we can rule that that's not going to hurt the case. Mm -hmm. um, it's pretty clear, even. You know, the, car, the coroner said this was a very strong individual. Two people had defensive wounds, overpowered those people. So I'm just trying to get uh, steer the conversation into a way. So I have another son, I have another person who's going to school there, and I don't sure. want him walking around those streets if it's not safe. So, um, you know, we know as a family what we're looking for. And, you know, if they see an individual looking a certain way, I'm, I'm telling my kids, you know, steer clear of that. See, but uh, this I is want your... other families to know. Steve, this is your okay. first, and I'm sorry to interrupt you, brother, but this is your first Christmas without Kaylee. Um, how you doing? How, how's your family doing? To be honest, we're not even really going to have a Christmas because we, you just can't, you can't get yourself there to where uh, it would make sense. One of my uh, children, the youngest one, is going to go stay with some families because they're going to have the normal type Christmas, mm -hmm. and she deserves that. But for us. We, we 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 can't do that it's it's too close to our heart and how do you have a celebration like this when you you've lost two of your favorite people in the world yeah brother we continue to pray for your audience as well thank you so much for joining the program thank you sir oh man that was very sad to hear that as well um okay just hold on one second i just want to verify there what time do they close the corner club yeah, they close at around 2 a.m. Um, so I, I missed the theory, but I saw someone's comment about the theory. So they open from 10 a.m. until 2 a.m. You know, what I find interesting is that, so two thoughts. Of course, the white hoodie guy, if he's walking with them before, which was the intention of releasing the footage, the intention was not to have whoever Adam is completely doxxed and attacked. Um, the group that released the footage meant it really well. Like, let me show you. He didn't just intercept them and just stand there and stare at them and then they ditched him. He was with them before. <laughs> but to me, it makes him, it makes, it makes it plausible that he's even more angry than that they ditched him like that, right? I'm just saying, right? And so, um, yeah, if Adam is the one that also lives with Jack D, Kaylee's ex, and then Kaylee saying Maddie, which is, I don't know, you guys, I, I just got a few emails now as well saying that you hear something else. But I can hear, Maddie, what did you tell Adam? And it's like, oh, I told him everything. I don't know what that would be, but it could even be 
Kaylee got a new car. Kaylee's got a new job. She's going backpacking in January. She's starting a new job in in Texas in February. It could be stuff like that, like updates like that. I'm not too sure. Um, thank you so much, Bonnie. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. <laughs> you guys are saying there's three Davids too. What? Three Davids. There's so many, <laughs> so many names in this case by now. Um, but what we don't want to do is go after every single Adam on their social media. There is, of course, yes, an Adam that Maddie and Kaylee follow on Instagram and they follow him. And this is apparently the Adam that lives with Jack D in the same house, which is um, just down the road. But, you know, every time someone pops up, like the vape shop guy, the neighbor, the other neighbor, just everyone. It's like, everyone is like, oh my word, this one. I mean, it can't be. <laughs> I, I understand the curiosity, but we mustn't attack people coming forward. We just got to observe, let law, law enforcement do their thing. And uh, I mean, at some point we will have the answers, right? It is a very scary case. It's scary to think that uh, four out of six people in a house were brutally stabbed in their beds. <laughs> Um, seemingly possibly asleep. That is so scary that someone went in the house, did this, and that they're still out there. That is a very scary thought. So I understand the urgency that people have in, okay, what is happening? And this person needs to be caught because they do. They're very, very, very dangerous. Yes. Um, so Gemini says it could be why they kept calling Jack. It could be. So let's say this is a pure speculation. Let's say they were at the corner club and let's say Adam who lives with Jack is a, a barman there. And let's say they were flirting with lots of guys or something because Kaylee's on a break. Remember, she took a break from Jack. So if Adam is like, hey, man, um, asking Maddie, so what's up with Kaylee? Like, no, she got a new car and she's starting a new job and it's so exciting. She's going backpacking and this and this. Maybe that's the everything. And then maybe then Maybe I'm speculating big time, okay? But maybe then um, Kaylee got a message uh, from Jack to be like, "What the hell, man? Uh, why didn't you tell me about this or something?" And then maybe that's why they called so many times um, right before three in the morning, of course. And he says he was asleep, so which he could be. His phone could be on silent. He could have been asleep. Yes. So yes, that is so true. Sarah Moon says, "If something happened to me, I would want my dad to be like Steve." And if you, I don't want to show you guys his LinkedIn profile, um, but I've looked at it and it's just, it's actually really nice to see you sharing a lot of uplifting messages on there. Like um, it's almost like retweeting, like reposting really inspiring things where people show a lot of love to their community. I really like that. He's got a really good attitude about this in such a terrible, you know, this is a terrible crime. I mean, it's unimaginable. And yet he's sharing things on LinkedIn to uplift people, which I think is amazing. That's right, JB Gunner. We all know what a break means. Uh, that can enrage a young man. It could. And if he didn't know about the car, the backpacking trip coming up, and the new job in Texas, and just everything exciting going for her, and maybe even, how do we know that she wasn't maybe seeing someone new? It could. It could make him very angry as well, yes. Steph says, Gisler, did they leave right after? If so, may explain them abruptly leaving. Well, yeah, they got their food and then they left, right? Social Butterfly says, I stand with Steve 100%. Okay, so now we've looked at those two things. I just quickly, before I show you this body cam footage, which, huge shout out to Truth and Transparency, a channel. There's a couple of you that have been sending me her videos as well. Um, Lana from Truth and Transparency did some deep diving, okay, and found some body cam footage from September. And the reason for it also is the context of who lives at the house, who's occupying the rooms, what is going on there, what's the norm, like what's the baseline for the house, right? It was so interesting. So I have linked Lana's channel, Truth and Transparency, in my description box. And I'm going to show you just little clips. Just It's just about five minutes or so worth of clips. I just want to quickly see. I think it's five or six minutes that I put together of the clips that Lana shared. And I've got her permission. If you didn't see earlier, she was in here as well. Um, so we've made contact and all of that. And so I'm going to show you some of those clips, but I really would like it if you could go to her channel and watch the full episodes. There's two so far, and I'm, I think there's more coming as well. And it's just very interesting to see it. So we're going to play it. I'll play it for you, and we're going to discuss it. 
And uh, the first time around, I'm just going to just play the clip and then we can just talk about it a little bit after. The only thing I wanted to update before we look at the body cam footage, I just wanted to tell you this as well, based on yesterday talking about, you know, the pranks and everything that could be escalating the dead coyotes and all that kind of thing, fighting frets and losing. And this article was from 2015. Thank you so much to the person who sent that to me. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you, Samantha. Welcome to membership. So here they say tensions between, so this was, as I say, as I say, this was already posted in 2015, okay? That's when the coyote incident started happening, 2015, 2017. So they say tensions between the University of Idaho administrators, a fraternity, and the chapter's alumni have ended with the university's dean of students suddenly announcing his resignation after less than three months on the job. Just prior to the announcement, sanctions brought against the fraternity over hazing allegations were dropped. I no longer believe this is an environment where I can work on issues of student safety, Craig Chatrian, the Dean of Students, said. The safety of our students is the primary concern of the Dean of Students' office, and not being able to address concerns through our already established policies and agreements takes away the effectiveness of what this office can do. In the last year, several colleges and universities have made serious attempts to rein in negative fraternity behavior. Punishing fraternities can be a messy process, however. Placing student affairs employees in the crosses of the Greek organizations and their powerful alumni. In some cases, to lose such a battle also means it's time to find a new job. In September of 2015, Clemson University suspended all fraternity activity after a sophomore fell from a bridge to his death during what his parents believed to have been a hazing ritual. Just before winter break, the official who pushed for that decision Gail D. Sabatino, the university's well-respected vice president of student affairs, was suddenly replaced without explanation. In response to her departure, fraternity members on campus sang, Ding dong, the witch is dead. When Clemson previously discussed a ban of fraternity and sorority social activities in 2010, Greek alumni emailed the university saying such a suspension would jeopardize donations to the university. Some faculty and students had speculated that similar threats had been made leading to De Sabatino's departure. But Robert Denny, Clemson's Director of Media Relations, said those comments were unfortunate and uninformed. Welcome to all the members. We are having a members-only stream later, which I hope you'll join. Okay, and they say... Okay, are you guys following? So it's based on what we talked about yesterday. So make sure you check out yesterday's live stream. I've got timestamps for you. You can just skip right forward to it, okay, if you just click on the timestamp. So my point yesterday was that there could be an escalation in, you know, peer pressure, pranks, and <laughs> violence with all this hazing and all these rituals and things that they do. Okay, so then... They say there's coming to my Greek alumni at Idaho have made similar threats over recent proposals to require first year students to live in residence halls rather than Greek houses. Kevin Kruger, uh, president of NASPA, student affairs administrators in higher education, said making these kinds of unpopular decisions put student affairs employees right in the firing line. No one's out to get fraternities, but administrators are doing what they think is best for students, Kruger said. There continues to be to increasingly be very low tolerance for chapters that aren't able to conform to policy. At the same time, you're absolutely going to get phone calls from alumni. It's very uh, politicized environment. My hope is that campuses are doing the right thing for students and not bending to the interest of a single group of alumni who may be opposed. Catherine Aiken, the University of Idaho's provost and vice president said the university does not place alumni interests ahead of safety of students. Our biggest concern is the welfare of the students, Aiken said. That's uppermost in our mind. I think the Greek community shares that commitment to that welfare and development. I think we are all in agreement that this is a place where the safety of students is of paramount importance. Thank you, Steve, for becoming a member as well. Oh, yes. And uh, <laughs> Tracy says, Algo, welcome. Algo, I gave you a wrench. I hope that's okay. Don't feel obliged. Um, I just think, yeah, I think it would be great if you if you had one, even if it's temporarily for today. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. Okay. So they say with houses that are privately owned and located off campus, like the one at 1122 King Road, Idaho fraternities, like many across the country, are notoriously difficult to police. And then we're going to look at the body cam footage. One university official described them as holding tremendous power 
and they have experienced a number of tragedies, controversies, and lawsuits in recent years. Hope you guys find it interesting. Within weeks of each other in 2009, two students were seriously injured in falls from upper story fraternity windows. It happened again at another Idaho fraternity in 2011 and again in 2012. A student celebrating his 21st birthday in 2010 took at least 15 shots in less than three hours and died of alcohol poisoning in his fraternity house. A tw in 2013, a freshman wandered away from a fraternity party and froze to death under a bridge. Later that year, a University of Idaho student was sentenced to 15 years in prison for essaying another student in the bushes behind a fraternity house as a party continued inside. In February, the Dean of Students Office found the fraternity Phi Gamma Delta uh, to be, some people, uh, someone emailed me about the pronunciation. Interesting. Sometimes it's Phi and sometimes it's Phi, literally same spelling. So I'm sorry if I botched that one. <laughs> Phi Gamma Delta to be in violation of the university's hazing policies. The fraternity quickly agreed to accept the sanctions proposed by the officer. Oh, sorry, by the office. As part of the agreement, freshman members were no longer allowed to live in the house and the chapter was put on probation for three years. You know who else been put on probation now in 2022? Uh, two out of the three, two sororities and the fraternity <laughs> where the victims were at, which, where, where they belong to. Mercedes, thank you so much for your super sticker. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Fiona. Okay. So again, I'm not saying it is, you know, fraternity guys or a guy or girls or anyone that did this crime. I'm just seeing a concerning trend of more and more um, over the top hazing violence or deaths and just, you know, the dares get bigger and bigger. So I don't know. Don't know what that does for mental health in general, right? At Idaho, Greek organizations accused of violating the rules have the choice of having the case heard by the Greek Community Standards Board or simply having the Dean of Students decide the sanctions. Uh, Pi Gamma Delta originally agreed to the latter, but the fraternity later changed its mind and asked instead for the case to be heard by the Greek Community Standards Board. I don't know if I've got it in my clips, but if you look at the Truth and, uh, Truth and Transparency channel and you watch the full body cam, they actually talk about, look, this is an, a noise... Um, request like we just we just need you to turn down the noise we don't want to take you to these boards right the greek community standards boards and panels and things like that so a panel is comprised nearly entirely of greek students and alumni we're almost done with this then we're going to look at the footage the standards board rarely decides cases as serious as hazing university officials said but after fraternity members said they thought the original process was unfair the pi gamma delta phi gamma delta was allowed to withdraw its acceptance of the sanctions there are no rules saying hazing allegations cannot be handled by the board. Okay. I just want to see a little bit long. It's, it's, it's quite a long article, huh? The University of Idaho has a long history of a vibrant Greek community, Aiken said. We are always interested in what our alumni are thinking and are open to them providing input on any topic. But ultimately, the, the university is responsible for student welfare and not alumni. The University of Idaho would not allow any alumni to unduly influence any decisions it makes. So, yes, that is all of that. And they say, I suspect his decision to leave wasn't easy and was one he felt was morally right. One recent graduate wrote on Facebook, I actually question why the administration didn't back him or support his opinion. I worry that the next dean of students will follow the direction of the administration with no question. After all, it's a good old boys club. So that's that. Now, what we're going to do now is I'm going to show you this footage. First, I'll put the credit up of the channel. The channel is called Truth and Transparency, okay? It's linked in my description box. Go check the full videos out there. Here's some clips to show you. So what this is, is you can hear the house. This was on September 1st, uh, 2022, September, okay? So the murders happened in November. So this is at the beginning of September this year. I mean, they initially said everyone moved in by June, right? So... It's interesting to see the level, you know, the, the, the partying, the noise. There was a noise complaint. We don't know who that noise complaint was from. But there was a noise complaint. The police went out there. There's body cam footage. There's multiple angles and everything that's on the Truth and Transparency channel. All right. So let's, let's have a look at this. I'll 
Nossa, como é que ela tá? How goes it? Oh, hi. How are you? Who lives here? Um, uh, we're not actually sure. Do you, know you don't know who lives here? No, okay. no, I don't. We're just here for a noise complaint. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. No. The other ones work because they're around like crazy. Beat on the damn door. <coughs> oh. Look at that. Abandoned property. Hey, who's the owner of, uh, or who lives here? Who's here? Um, I can go get them off that. Okay, please, please. True lease? This is what the other group had that ran away. <laughs> yeah. yeah, those ones kept walking to the car and the other one woo woo around the back corner. So. Abandoned property. Well, there's a lot of fucking alcohol in there. Mm -hmm. Come to the door, guys. Send whoever works, whoever lives here, down the door. Not yeah. yeah. For the most part. They're scared. Oh my god. Finally! No one's here that no one's here that no. at all. No so everyone here is trespassing? Well, no one's here that's trespassing, but no one no one that lives here is here right now. So where'd they go? They're just not here. I have no clue where they went. No clue. So you guys just throwing a party in in, in their house at the They time. were here at one point. They're not here right now. I just I they, just searched all the rooms. They left and went over to some other party and everyone is about to I just searched go all over to another party. Them. Okay. Who does live here? What are their names? I am actually not sure. I live across the street. Okay. I just came over. I haven't drank a drop. Male, female? Uh I think it's mainly females. I think okay. it's like four females. What sorority are they affiliated with? I uh, don't know. I, I don't, yeah, you I don't do. Know if I don't know if they're associated with the. I don't know. So I guarantee you they're associated with the sorority. As many of them are living here, it's an off-campus campus sorority house. I've been a cop for 22 years here. I'm not stupid. Don't play dumb games with me. I would rather deal with this as a noise complaint than getting a hold of the Greek council and the Greek board and all of that and the dean of students and playing all these stupid fucking games. You, All I want to do is deal with the noise complaint. Because I guarantee you there's a lot of underage drinking because they left their alcohol behind. Do you want us to try and get a name or a phone number Please, and if you you could. call someone? We just need to I, talk I, to somebody who lives here because okay. otherwise I have yeah. to be under the assumption you guys are unlawfully entered because no one who lives here is here. Okay. Right? We'll, we'll go. We'll so go go I need to verify number. that there was a party here. We'll now everyone left. We'll so thank you. We'll Thanks, Sorry, guys. We're not trying to make your life I understand. Yeah. I just letting you know this is how it's going to play out. I'm not going anywhere until I talk no, to somebody who actually lives here. Just know that it's sweet. Sweet. for us. That way we can get yeah. some sort of communication between us no, and them. No one here right now. No. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I do. Thank you. Hey, guys. Really, we're just coming here for this. On this, uh, on this phone here. All right, can you hear me, Maddie? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Do you live at one one two two, uh, Queen Street? Yes, I do. Okay. So, hey, the reason that we're here is that we received a noise complaint um, of loud music, partying. Okay. Once we approached the the house, uh, people started running away. Uh, they left a bunch of alcohol behind. We're not even coming for alcohol. We're coming for the noise complaint. And then we sat here for approximately 10 minutes trying to knock on the door. No one would come to the door until these two gentlemen came down and actually entered the door. So right now, um, if I can, I would like to collect your information, your name, number, your date of birth. Uh, and I'm guessing, our, and I want your current address at the, also as well, okay? Yeah, sounds good. I'm so sorry about that. It's okay. So, let me go ahead and what's your first name? Maddie? It could be the Maybe. 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 Yeah. And how do you spell that, Maddie? My, like, legal name is Madison. It's M-A-D-I-S-O-N. What's your middle name, Madison? May, M-A-Y. Okay. What's your last name? Mogan, M-O-G-E-N. 
M O G E N. Okay. What's your date of birth, Madison? Okay. Uh, and is uh, what's your current address? One one two two King Road. Okay. And are you a student at uh, U of I? Yep. Okay. All right, Madison. So here's the deal. Okay. They've already said that no one here lives at, uh, like, none of the, the occupants that live at this address are here right now. So now you have a house full of random people. Um, you need to let them know that the noise needs to needs to come down, okay? We just received a, a noise complaint. We want that music turned down. Um, and we don't want to come back again tonight. If we have to come back again tonight, then there's going to be even more problems, okay? I see both sides. good. I'm, I'm just frustrated. I'm also so sorry once again. Hey, I, I understand, okay? Uh, it's just, I mean, if, if I were you guys, I'd probably just come home and make sure that whoever is, is, is partying here is keeping it down to a minimum, okay? Um, yeah, we're right. all of them. Okay, so at this point, um, we're going to leave, okay? Uh, and again, if I have to come back later tonight, like I said, I, I just want to express that there's going to be some, uh, some citations given out, okay? Okay, very clear. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Okay, you enjoy your evening, all right? You too. Bye. Okay, so we're going to watch it again, and then I'll make some commentary. So that is from the 1st of September this year, which is when everyone should have already been living in the house, right? And so you can see that bottom, the bottom floor, the one room, it looks pretty empty. You know, it's not like it doesn't look like a girl's room or an occupied room. There's some golf clubs. And as you just peep through that curtain, right, the cop was like looking for something there. Um, so, yeah, that was interesting. I'm quickly going to show you the channel where this comes from and that excellent uh, sleuthing, deep diving and finding this. Thank you, Pernille. You say hearing a voice so sad. Yep, I agree. It is very, very sad. Um, so let me quickly show you the channel. Just hold on one second. Here we go. Okay, the channel is called Truth and Transparency. And these videos, <laughs> I've watched them a few times now, both of these, breaking news, body cam footage at off campus, it's under the live section. If you guys are not aware, uh, firstly, make sure you subscribe to myself and Truth and Transparency, okay, and hit the bell. Then if you go home, videos, a lot of people are getting lost with YouTube's new format. There's videos, and then there's a section of live. So on my channel specifically, make sure you look at live, okay? Because that's where I'm mostly at. Um, live and videos, check out both of those. If you go to Lana's page here, Truth and Transparency Videos, you can see there's a bunch of videos as well. You could see the live streams over here. And she had discussions on the footage that she found, how she found it, why she found it, all that kind of stuff. So, and just discussing it there with the audience. So I hope you guys will become part of her audience and check it out. So there's this one and this one, very interesting. So that's what I was doing, like two in the morning, <laughs> watching this stuff, yes. And I was like, oh my word. So go and subscribe over there. Say you're from Grizzly True Crime so that Lana knows where you're coming from. I really appreciate that I had permission to show her footage today. So thank you so much, Lana. And happy birthday to your son who's turning seven today. All right, Green Eye says, Lana is awesome. So now we're going to watch it one more time, and I'm just going to pause it here and there to make some commentary. For example, yes, the noise level is pretty high. I think it's very strange that they say none of the occupants of the house are in the house. So the house is just filled with who now, you know, and it's also not like that because Bethany answers the door. Bethany, one of the surviving or unharmed roommates, answers the door. The cops say, can we speak to someone who lives here? And she says, OK, I'll go get I'll go get them quickly. But she's one of the ones that lives there, speculatively, even since 2021, based on Instagram pictures. You know, if you just look at her Instagram profile um, and Maddie's, I don't know, to me, it looks like Bethany and Dylan were there before. I don't know. So I'm just like, it's interesting. And to see, of course, that the guys answer the door and they're like, oh, yeah, we don't even live here. We have no idea who lives here. So, yeah, I mean, I just feel like, are they... Are any of them coming forward now? Does anyone that knows information, are they saying things? I really hope so. I really hope so. You know, we saw this in the Kylie Rodney case too, like people not wanting to come forward and say just a little bit they know. I hope that these students will come forward and say what they know because it could really, really help. For everyone asking about the white car, I'm no car specialist, but I think it's the Chevy. I think it's a, a, a Chevy, but we'll have a look again. Um, 
Yes, Lana is another channel, which is Truth and Transparency. Lana is Truth and Transparency. Okay, so this is the channel with the footage. Subscribe over there. Say you came from Grizzly True Crime. Give lots of grizzly love. Okay, so there's that. Okay, so let me play it one more time. So you can hear the noise, and somebody made a noise complaint. And remember Inan, the neighbor who, yes, he's got his own YouTube channel now and everything. But uh, Inan said that that house, like the way that it, it's on that hill and everything and all the surrounding houses, kind of like an amphitheater and sound travels <laughs> really well there. And you can hear it here. I mean, the disturbance, of course, to all the neighbors and everything, it must have been quite hectic. Of course, this is only at, uh, what, 10 to 9. You can see on top there. On the top right hand corner, 901 2022 2052 36. Okay. Thank you so much, Cindy. I really appreciate that. And after this, I want to show you one more thing. I will do my best to 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 be done very quickly. I know the World Cup final's coming, but let's you guys are true crimers. I don't know how many of you are watching it, but we'll just be here for a little bit. Okay. So this is round two of watching the footage, and now I'm going to pause it here and there. So here, Mad says, so dark. I know, right? The house. I mean, just look at the surrounding area. So if you think of someone entering there, and this is a 2052 in September. So can you imagine on November 13th at between 3 and 4 a.m.? It's so dark. It's hard to see cars. It's hard to see people. It would be really easy for someone to be hiding in the woods at the back of the house or even to go around the front here and not be seen, right? Seems like it. Yes, and I really, I hope at some point we'll, we'll, we'll learn who made the noise complaint and how agitated were they with the noise that was being made in this house a lot, right? <laughs> Van Jim says, Grizzly Live, it's more than, greater than, more important than soccer. <laughs> Thank you so much. Hey, how goes it? Oh, hi. How are you? Who lives here? Um, uh, we're not actually sure. Do you, know I don't you don't know who lives here? here. No, okay. no, I don't. We're just here for a noise complaint. So nobody who's in the house seems to know who lives there. There's a massive party there, but none of the occupants of, of the house. Interesting, right? I'm just going to scroll this at the bottom again. Go subscribe to Truth and Transparency. This is body cam from the 1st of September. What a great find, because no one else has found this. Not mainstream news. I mean, no one has found this. And uh, Lana from Truth and Transparency said she's dedicating this to Kaylee's dad because she said if she if something happened to her, she would want um, you know it to be handled the way that Kaylee's dad is handling it. And she hopes that this will bring some answers, even just to know well who was in which room and what was going on, right? Okay. Okay, so here we go. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. No. The other ones were because they ran like crazy. Beat on the damn door. <coughs> oh. Look at that. Bandit property. Hey, who's the owner of, uh, or who lives, who lives here? Um, I can go get them off that. Okay, please, please. Okay, so that was Bethany. Bethany Funk. Look at that. Bandit property. Hey, who's the owner of, uh, uh or who lives here? There you go. So th this is Bethany. Bethany and Dylan apparently lived on that first floor. And she's opening the door and they're asking, who lives here? Can you get them? And she said, okay, she'll go get them. Of course, she's one of the ones that lives there. Just saying. <laughs> Barcast, 3131. The first girl that answered the door looked like a roommate, lol. Closed the door and she gone. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for that uh, super sticker. Yes. Yeah. This is one of the roommates. If you just look at her and compare the photos and everything, right? Th th this is, well, I suppose I should say to be safe. In my opinion, this is Bethany. One of the roommates. Okay. Here. Please here. Um, I can go get them off that. Okay, please, please. True lease? This is what the other group had that ran away. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and just to clarify, someone's asking, is that the house where the crime took place? Yes. This is the house, 1122. It's actually Queen Road. I don't know why they call it King Road. And in fact, the Truth and Transparency channel 
got this footage by requesting it from the police department by requesting 1122 Queen Road. When the police officer calls Maddie, which you can hear on the phone later, he says, are you at 1122 Queen Road? And she says, yes. So later she says 1122 King Road, but it is actually technically Queen Road. So it's interesting, of course, that, you know, it's got nothing, no red flags here. I'm just like that Zillow and everywhere listed it as King Road because it's actually Queen Road. Um, but yes, that was Bethany that opened the door. This is, it's still got that, um, I guess it's like a wreath, like a gold wreathing on the door that we still see today on the door. So, yes. Yeah, those ones kept walking to the car and the other one, woo -woo, around the back corner. So, abandoned property. Well, there's a lot of fucking alcohol in there. Mm -hmm. Sorry, after the headline says, that's normal behavior, she's going to tell everyone the cops are there, this is common. Absolutely. I'm not saying it's uncommon. So I hope I'm not implying that because it's not. It's not uncommon. Of course, she's going to be like, oh, hey, okay, yeah, yeah. I'll be, I'll go get them. And then just like run inside and tell everyone, oh my gosh, the cops are here. Absolutely, right? Interesting. Chris Donnelly, if you guys don't remember Chris, I showed his uh, website before where he broke down the Twitch stream from the food truck. And also showed us, which was new information, the, you know, just pointing it out that there were people buying meals for girls at night on the Twitch stream. So that was interesting as well. Inan had the noise complaint on his Facebook profile, said something about someone leaving a note. Very interesting. And then, of course, they've got the mail situation that they are looking into as well, which is interesting too. I don't know if that's like notes for this type of thing, right? CCK says, are you going to explain why you think this is relevant? I hope I did in the beginning. I think it's relevant because it shows that one of the bottom bedrooms seems in September unoccupied, which then would imply that, yes, as was speculated in the beginning, that was rumored that maybe Dylan and Bethany were in one room on the bottom floor. Or if you watch the Johnny Law episode where he used his glow pen to show the layout of the house, he was saying there's pictures of Dylan on the second floor uh, in a room there. So it's just about figuring out, you know, what's true, what's not true, separating fact from fiction, who was actually staying where. And as we can see in September, where everyone was well moved in already, that one room, bottom floor, which would have then been speculatively Dylan's room, was actually a storage type room, right? So this was recorded in September. You can see the top right hand corner, 90901 2022, the 1st of September 2022. And it's interesting as well, just to see what's the norm, to see how many people, you know how people got angry about, is this really a party house? Why would people call this a party house? Why do they say party house? Well, you could see it's a party house. People got so offended when it started being said that this is a party house. They're like, no, they were quiet. They were well-behaved. They never partied there. Like, I mean, I don't know why that was a thing because they're college students. Of course it's a party house. And as we read before in the article, well, yeah, off-campus homes <laughs> are even more difficult to police. So it's a great place to party. And this house is filled with people, even guys answering the door, who are kind of, you know, acting responsible for the house, but they don't even live there. They say they live across the street. What would that be across the road? The Sigma Chi fraternity, you know? So, And they're saying they don't know if it's sorority girls. They don't know anything. Normal college kid behavior, of course. But that is why we're looking at it, just to see what's the norm, what happened there, what were the noise complaints about? You know, who was there? Who wasn't there? All that kind of stuff. Thank you. Thank you for your super sticker. That wasn't necessary. You say, thank you for giving me credit and emailing. Thank you so much that we could show this to the Grizzlies. I hope lots of Grizzlies will go over to you because, of course, I'm just showing you guys what Lana from Truth and Transparency has found. And I think it's incredible. And then you can go over there to her channel and listen to why Lana thinks it's relevant, right? We've all got different opinions. If you don't think it's relevant, that's okay too. But I think it's very interesting to go back in time. And that's the type, you know, I wrote true crime books, right? And I always go back to the beginning. Where was the person born? How did they grow up? What happened here? Look at the whole story. And this just takes us back to September, which I think is very interesting as well. Thank you, Karen. You say, thanks for this G, gives more perspective for sure. In fact, shout out to Karen. You were the first person to send this to me. So thank you so much for sending it to me. That's how I became aware of it. Come to the door, guys. Send whoever works, whoever lives here down the door. 
Yeah. Yeah. For the most part. They're scared. Oh my god. I'm just going to pause there. Marilyn says, note, the other second floor bedroom is located behind the kitchen that had a small window without the screen. Yes, that window screen was on the ground. Seen in many photos, just an FYI. Yep, very interesting. Very interesting. Finally! No one's here that no. 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 So everyone here is trespassing? Well, no one's here that's trespassing, but no one, no one that lives here is here right now. Yeah, and you just saw the room there with the golf club. Sorry, I think I, I was skipping over it because I was looking at your guys' comments. <laughs> Hold on one second. Here we go. Here we go. I slowed it down so we can see. So there, you can see it's not... There's not like clothing in there or things on the wall or anything really. Look. See it? There's nothing on the shelves. Just golf clubs. It looks almost like a mattress turned on its side. You see? So... To me, that's interesting because they're like, oh, the two girls, they just stayed downstairs. Each one had a room. And I really liked, if you don't know who Johnny Law is, check out his video as well. He did a really cool video of the layout of the house. Um, he's former law enforcement. And that was great too, right, to see that. And um, he basically said, well, in some of the pictures, you can see Dylan in her bedroom on the second floor, not on the first floor. So that was interesting to me. Can you imagine if it comes out that one of the surviving or unharmed roommates was actually on the same floor as Zena and Ethan, even though it's kind of around the corner and all that. They could have still maybe not heard something, but still, it's like, damn, imagine if they're on that same floor. It would be even more of a bizarre case. My goodness. Oh, no, don't worry at all. CCK, I didn't mean to sound ugly with my question. I really want to know. No, I know. I didn't take it as ugly. Don't worry. Thank you so much for your super sticker. I thought it was a very relevant question, and I just wanted to explain it in case anyone does wonder. Well, why? Thank you so much, Canadian Cookie. <laughs> That's such a cool name. And thank you to Bundy Data. Also, if you look at the timestamp of this video at the top, just remember this is from September. The quadruple homicide occurred on November 13th. So that room could have been occupied later. They could have moved around a lot. I mean, we also assume that Kaylee had moved out already and then she just came back for the weekend to show off her car, right? Which is why she would have then been in Maddie's room and in Maddie's bed because her stuff may have already been moved out. So a lot could have changed since September. This is from the 1st of September, 2022. Come to the door, guys. Send you to work. Whoever lives here down the door. We're not leaving. Uh, yeah. yeah, for the most part. They're scared. Oh my god! Finally! So everyone here is trespassing? Well, no one's here that's trespassing, but no one no one that lives here is here right now. So where'd they go? They're just not here. I have no clue where they went. No clue. So you guys just throwing a party in, in, in their house? I <laughs> like how the cops, I mean, the cops are definitely used to all of this. <laughs> it is a, it's a college town, really. Moscow, Idaho, I think there's 26,000, uh, the population is about 26,000, and 50% are students. It's a college town, you know? So, yeah, for them, like, oh, boy, like, okay. And they say they've, they've actually finished studying. These are graduates is what they say later. And that they, you know, just doing their masters and everything else. So, but the cops are like, uh-huh, uh-huh. So you're just, <laughs> you're just answering the door. And like, who lives here? I don't know who lives here. I just live across the street. Okay. <laughs> if they were here at one point. They're not here right now. I just, I they, just searched all the rooms. They left and went over to some other party. And everyone is about to I leave just and go all over to another party. Like, Okay. Who does live here? What are their names? I am actually not sure. I live across the street. 
okay. I just came over. I haven't drank a drop. Male, female? Uh, I think it's mainly females. I think okay. it's like four females. What sorority are they affiliated with? I uh, don't know. I, I don't, yeah, you I don't do. Know and he says it's four females, but it's a six-bedroom house, of course, and we know it was five females. September. Okay, so Maddie, Kaylee, Zena, Dylan, and Bethany. So five females. He's saying maybe about four females. I don't know if they're associated with the... I don't know. So I guarantee you they're associated with the sorority. As many of them are living here, it's an off-campus campus sorority house. I've been a cop for 22 years here. I'm not stupid. Don't play dumb games with me. I would rather deal with this as a noise complaint than getting a hold of the Greek council and the Greek board and all of that and the dean of students and playing all these stupid fucking games. You, All I want to do is deal with the noise complaint. Because I guarantee you there's a lot of underage drinking because they left their alcohol behind. Do you want us to try and get a name or a phone number Please, and if you could. call someone? We just need to I, talk I, to somebody who lives here because otherwise okay. I have yeah. to be under the assumption you guys are unlawfully entered because no one who lives here is here. Okay. Right? We'll, we'll go. We'll so we'll I need to problem. verify that there was a party here. We'll now <laughs> I like how the cops like... Oh, okay, so it's not just a noise complaint now. This is now actually trespassing then? If no one's here and you're all in here, then they're like, wait, wait. Okay, well, we'll just we'll just go in, get some numbers, you know. So I'm I'm not too sure how they you know, who gave Maddie's number and where she was when the officer called her as well. But yes, you are gonna hear uh, the law enforcement officer here call Maddie Mogan. One laugh, we'll so thank you. We'll Thanks, Sorry, guys. We're not trying to make your I understand. Yeah. I just letting you know this is how it's going to play out. I'm not going anywhere until I talk to somebody no, who actually lives there. Just know that it's the door for us. That way we can get yeah. some sort of communication between us no, and them. No, 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 so just remember that this footage I have here for you is just clips that I've uh, taken from the footage. If you want to watch the whole thing, and I would recommend it, as you know, I love interrogation tapes, body cam footage and all that, and watching it in full so that you don't miss a beat. So please go check that out on Truth and Transparency. This is just an example. It was just a few points I wanted to raise in my video today, and I hope you'll go there and watch the whole thing because... It's even more interesting then to see all the different angles and hear and see everyone who's there and just see what's going on. Okay, so go to Truth and Transparency. Subscribe over there to check out the videos. Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Do you live at 1122 uh, Queen Street? So he asked, do you live at 1122 Queen Street? And she says, yes. This is Maddie Mogan, one of the victims in the Idaho quadruple homicide case. Um, she has answered the phone. Yes, I do. Okay. So, hey, the reason that we're here is that we received a noise complaint um, of loud music, partying. Okay. Once we approached the the house, uh, people started running away. Uh, they left a bunch of alcohol behind. We're not even coming for alcohol. We're coming for the noise complaint. And then we sat here for approximately 10 minutes trying to knock on the door. No one would come to the door until these two gentlemen came down and actually answered the door. So... Gotcha. Right now, um, if I can, I would like to collect your information, your name, number, your date of birth, uh, and I'm guessing, our, and I want your current address at the, also as well, okay? Yeah, sounds good. I'm so sorry about that. It's okay. So, let me go ahead, and what's your first name? Maddie? Could be the name. Maybe, maybe. And how do you spell that, Maddie? My, like, legal name is Madison. It's M-A-D-I-S-O-N. What's your middle name, Madison? May, M-A-Y. Okay. What's your last name? Mogan, M-O-G-E-N. M-O-G-E-N? Yep. Okay. What's your date of birth, Madison? Okay. Uh, and is, uh, what's your current address? 1122 King Road. Okay. And are you a student at uh, U of I? Yep. Okay. I will graduate with a bachelor's. I'm still getting my master's. All right, Madison. So here's the deal. Okay, they've already said that no one here lives. At, uh, like, none of the the occupants that live at this address are here right now. So now you have a house full of random people. Um, you need to let them know that the noise needs to needs to come down. Okay, we just received a, a noise complaint. We want that music turned down. Um, and we don't want to come back again tonight. If we have to come back again tonight, then there's going to be even more problems, okay? I see both sides. Sounds good. I'm, I'm just frustrated. I'm also so sorry once again. 
I, I, I understand, okay? Uh, it's just, I mean, if, if I were you guys, I'd probably just come home and make sure that whoever is, is, is partying here is keeping it down to a minimum, okay? Um, yeah, all right. <laughs> okay, so at this point, um, we're going to leave, okay? Uh, and again, if I have to come back later tonight, like I said, I, I just want to express that there's going to be some, uh, some citations given out, okay? Okay, very clear. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Okay, you enjoy your evening, all right? You too. Bye. Okay, so now we've seen the clips twice. I'm sure you're going to love the full body cam footage if you are interested in that. So go check it out at Truth and Transparency. The link is in my description box, and I will link it with timestamps as well. I only have two quick more things to show you. Thank you so much, Ellie. I really appreciate that. Ellie, I said here at Grizzly True Crime, we keep it grizzly, meaning be respectful and kind to all. Gizla works hard to bring us all the info in a compassionate manner. Let's maintain that for her and the victims. Thank you so, so much. I really, really appreciate it. Okay, so I just want to show you, remember the body cam footage that Law and Crime Network shared, the extended one, 45 minutes, and then there's apparently a scream heard. <laughs> they had it on Court TV as well, and Vinnie Politon was like, can you hear a scream? I was like, I don't know, can you? And he was the only one <laughs> on the panel that was like, I think I hear a scream. And the other three guests were like, I don't think we hear a scream. So then what they did here on Inside Edition is they had a, a forensic audio expert analyze that that footage and then tell us his thoughts. Asked forensic audio expert Anthony Nelson to enhance the audio for Inside Edition. It definitely doesn't sound like a human calling out or screaming to me. Could it be a squeak of a, of a wheel speeding away? Yes. It could be. Yes. A neighbor who lives close to the murder scene told a citizen sleuth he also heard a scream that night. Just looking back, I was like, I wonder, I wonder if like, you know, that wasn't just like some drunk dude like screaming, like it's actually like the murder. Meanwhile, the mother. Okay, so I just wanted to show you that, that a forensic audio expert does not think it's a scream. I want to show you two more things, two more things, and then we're going to call it a day. Um, <laughs> so what I just wanted to say here quickly, just laughing at one of the comments there. Um, Adrian says, is that the white car they're looking for? No, I believe that is a sh white Chevy Malibu from all the car experts. Uh, Heathcliff the Cat says, can I become a grizzly? If you want to be a grizzly, all you got to do is subscribe. Just subscribe and hit the bell so you know when I'm next going live or uploading. If you want to actually be a member, yeah, you can. Everything's on my website as well. If you can't find the links and things, it's all on grizzlytruecrime.com. If you just go to the YouTube tab, you click on become a member and that's it. Thank you so much, uh, Jinxie, for that super sticker. And now there's two more things I want to show you. Number one would be this little interview here, which was ABC7 Chicago. Wing in Idaho as the hunt for a murderer hits 30 days with no results. You can feel it here in Moscow. It's just a, a very heavy cloud. Uh, it's a hard place to be. Police spokesperson Robbie Johnson. Also, thank you so much to Stefan, who's one of our mods and OG. You've been here from the beginning, Stefan, for helping me clear that up of why is this lady now talking? Who's who's this Robbie lady? Where's Aaron Snell? Aaron Snell is the PIO for the Idaho State Police, I believe, and the Moscow PD PIO is this lady who's talking. So that is why there's been a change. Johnson telling ABC News they brought in an army of experts and FBI support to comb through new tips about the white Hyundai Elantra seen in the immediate area in the early morning hours of November 13th. We'd like to know who was in that car that night, where it might be now. It could be in a different state. Uh, we have resources across the country that are ready to jump on in any information we can provide on that and follow those leads and, and talk to whoever is in that car. Local businesses heeding the call, turning over surveillance video, anything that might help. They said that ours was actually one of the best, like clearest, they could see clear across to the other side of the road. Um, so they were kind of hopeful when they did get, get that footage. With new details, authorities re-interviewing residents, bringing back memories. Do they have those reports of, of, of a scream that was heard? They're aware of uh, people talking about that happening and of course they're looking into that type of thing. Every, every bit of information that comes in, they're, they're looking into. The university preparing to close for winter break after holding commencement ceremonies over the weekend, honoring Zana Kernadel, Ethan Chapin, Madison Mogan, and Kaylee Gonzalez, who was set to graduate. Instead, her father Steve, desperate for answers and pleading with authorities to find the person and the weapon 
So listen carefully to what Katie's dad says here. It's pretty interesting. Responsible. This was a brutal weapon. It sounds like it was a professional type weapon that couldn't break. And weren't, they weren't stab wounds. You know, they were like large punctures. And so right now, people in this normally close-knit college town are asked to remain vigilant, to travel in pairs, and stick to well-lit areas. Authorities saying this should be a new way of life in Moscow, at least. You know, the thing I want to say about that is that is what Kaylee and Maddie did. They were vigilant. They stayed in pairs. They even had a guy with them. They got a private ride, which uh, Katie's dad said was a sorority designated type driver. Like, what could they have done differently? You know, that's all like, do the buddy system. They did the buddy system. Remember when uh, Kelly's sister Olivia said, they did it. They did the buddy system. They got an Uber, she said, but it was a private ride, confirmed later. Private drive back home. They got let the dog out for potty. They went back in. They locked the doors. That's what um, Olivia Consolvis said. They did all of that. So yes, everyone must stay safe. I just feel like they, they tried to do that. And the vape shop guy said that Kelly always had someone with her because she was worried, according to him, about a stalker. You know, so this is like, as Kaylee's dad said, um, they were all in bed from everything we know, asleep. You know, they partied a bit and everything, and then they're in bed at three in the morning, sleeping somewhere between three and four. And someone was either hiding in the house or entered the house and stabbed four people to death. There's no, like, there's nothing you can learn from that of what to do. You just get terrible, evil people out there, like Danny Rowling. We saw this happen in that case as well. The gains will rip around. So yeah, I think that's what's most disturbing about this case is that everyone was like all tucked in sleeping. College students, so young, 20 and 21. Oh my word. Terrible. Okay. So one more thing I want to show you is this. Um, it's interesting. If you look at the Crime Circus video, it's called Jack Decour number two. So people are speculating now that... <laughs> People are speculating that this is Adam on the roof. I'm not sure if it is or not. I have no idea. But they're looking at this white car over here. And then this video is literally the receipts to more allegedly, I'm still saying it's alleged, but, but prove that this is the house where Jack D lived, which is where Murphy, the dog, spent most of his time. Which is why then Jeremy, the neighbor, and Inan, the neighbor, said they didn't ever see the dog. They never saw the dog. Jeremy actually said he saw the dog at the end of the cul-de-sac at a house, which could be this house. So he shows this house, and then he shows Jack and Kaylee at the house. Literally with the same windows and everything. This is Crime Circus. Let me play a little bit for you here. What do you think of this picture right here? I previously showed you this picture where Jack may live. Some of you doubted. Well, let's take a look-see at this picture right here. We've got Jack on the left and Kaylee on the right. But what's extra interesting about this photo? What do we see in the background? I do believe we see the very house discussed in my previous video. And that was a Crime Circus exclusive theory. Some people stole my video and didn't give me credit. But you heard it here first, breaking news from Crime Circus. Anyways, for those of you that still aren't convinced, let's zoom into the real estate photo and have a closer look. As you can see, that's the exact same window. It's the exact same bricks. It's the exact same concrete below. And you can also see part of the door, which is also an exact match. So. Yes, everyone, this is Drip Drop. If you don't know Crime Circus or anything about Drip Drop, go and check out his channel, Crime Circus. He's got some really good interrogation videos. You know we love those. Body cam videos, interrogation videos, and all of that. Um, I'm a patron of his and a member, and I just I just love that kind of stuff. So, and his research, man, the receipts he brings sometimes you're like, damn. <laughs> so go check this out. Thank you, Doctor Shrinker. Thank you so much for that uh, super sticker. What do you think now? You remember that video that allegedly showed Murphy running around that house? Same house. There's a photograph. And that TikTok is from. This other guy, Adam, that lives with Jack, which is why everyone's saying now the new surveillance that says, like, Maddie, what did you tell Adam? And it's like, oh, I told him everything. People are speculating about that based on that TikTok video, which is now being deleted by that Adam who lives with Jack, allegedly. Okay. So Jack and Kaylee at that house now. I could probably end this video right here with my point proven, but this is Crime Circus, so we're going to go a little deeper now. As you can see from the satellite view here, we've got what may be Jack's house on the left side. 
and over on the right side was Kaylee's house. There's only about 216 feet in between these two houses. That's less than a football field away, and I've previously said that's about a 30 second walk. I now think that's about a 20 second walk. Anyways, let's take note of this house in the middle with the white roof. You can see it's surrounded by rocks and a chain link fence in the background. And what do we see here? We see a picture of Jack and Kaylee. Some people have told me that Kaylee was way out of Jack's league. You leave me a comment and let me know down below. What do you think? Was Kaylee out of his league? Or do good guys actually win sometimes? Then again, in the end, she had broken up with him and was allegedly moving to Texas alone. So maybe nice guys really do finish last. Moving on, looking back at this satellite image from above, we can now see we have in our possession a picture of Jack, allegedly at the house on the left, as well as allegedly at the house in the middle with the rock yard. So one might... Right? I hope you'll go check this out. It's very interesting. You must check out his videos on this Idaho case. He's got lots of videos, uh, as I say, interrogation tapes and everything. I think Jack could be very familiar with cutting through directly in between those two houses, or even secretly behind in the tree line where nobody would even see anybody creeping through. So let's take a closer look at this tree line and check out some images of behind the property. As you can see over to the left side, that's part of the tree line behind the property. And if you look off into the distance, you can see the house that Jack allegedly lived in that Jack and Kaylee took that picture in front of. And I've previously showed you the TikTok video as well as realtor photos inside that house showing that is the same house. And look. I mean, whoa, the research he did on that was incredible. Mario says, is Adam a bartender or is it Jack's roommate? The answer is apparently both. Apparently both. Looking closer, you can see the other house that Jack and Kaylee were photographed at with the rock yard. So you could either cut in between those two houses or through the tree line. It's a very short walk. We're going to take a quick look and look at a few more pictures from behind the victim's house to show you the tree line and give you an idea of what kind of tree line we're looking at. So what do you think about these photographs I've just presented you? Some of you still aren't convinced? <laughs> okay, let's have a look-see at this picture right here. I just love it <laughs> when it's like, I'm just going to leave it there. Go check out his video. Okay. I don't want to show the whole thing here. Go check out his video. Crime Circus is the channel. But he's like, oh, okay. You don't believe me yet? Okay. Well, I have more receipts. <laughs> and then it's like, oh, oh, still not. Okay. No, just another one. It's amazing. So if you go here, Crime Circus, Jack 2. Here's one. Is Jack Decour guilty? Moscow, Idaho, ex-boyfriend investigation series. So he's got that one, that one. He's got the Jack Showalter one as well, which I'm sure you want to check out. And then, of course, uh, there's... Chazzy Boy, Chandler Holderson stuff as well. Um, so go and you'll love it. Go and check out the Sherry Papini stuff. If you guys have seen that stream we did on this channel, oh my word, that's pretty much what inspired my second channel as well. When we're talking about that case, my word. Um, so there's lots to see here. Crime Circus, thank you so much, Crime Circus, that I could show that as well. Um, very interesting stuff. So we'll just keep an eye on everything. Uh, thank you, Mike. Really appreciate that. Hope you guys enjoy the World Cup final. I'm 23 minutes over time for that. My bad. Uh, members, talking about Chandler Holderson, if you didn't ever, if anyone here didn't ever follow the Chandler Holderson case, the guy who murdered his parents and then dismembered them and everything it was horrible. Wow. And had his girlfriend sleep over at the house and all this. That was a crazy case. I have a full playlist for you to check out. And today, members and patrons, we are going to do a stream where I'm going to show you some of the Chandler Holderson jail calls, which I also have permission from another channel to show you guys that. So we'll be doing that later. I might shift the time. So make sure you check the community tab. It's set right now for like 2 p.m. Eastern. I might shift it two hours earlier, okay, around um, 6 o'clock my time, noon Eastern. So check the community tab and patrons, please check your inbox, okay? So then I'll see you there. Um, thank you so much, everyone who, who has joined and everything. Don't ever feel obliged, you guys. Thank you. All you got to do, it's free. Subscribe. If you're a lurker, please subscribe as well. Um, I'd really appreciate it. And hit the thumbs up, share. Those are all free things. I don't expect anything more ever, ever. I'm so grateful to all the members and patrons. And as a thank you, I'll just like take you guys around the Netherlands or we look at some of these interrogation tapes and things together. So yes. <laughs> Oh, man, Caroline, exactly. Chandler had a real nice gift to leave in the woods behind his girlfriend's family's house, too. He did. He did. Okay. Thank you so much to Robert Belt. Thank you so much for that super sticker. Thank you to all the content creators who were here today. I see some of you greeting some of them along the way. Thank you so much. You're always welcome. Algo says, I'll happily keep the wrench. That's wonderful to hear, Algo. Thank you so much. 
Um, you've got the, the the grizzly, the keep it grizzly style of chat, you know. And in case you all want to be mods, just remember, guys, my mods choose the mods. Okay. <laughs> so just keep chatting like you do, and then and then maybe here and there you you might get a wrench next to your name if we if we need some extra support. Thank you so much, Pen Dizzy. I really appreciate it. Thank you all for being here with me on a Sunday. I appreciate your time so, so much. Oh, my word. Um, yes, Kathleen says, lurkers are welcome. <laughs> welcome, lurkers. I hope that you will subscribe. It costs you nothing. You just hit the button, and then you'll know when I'm next, when you can next lurk, huh? And when you can next watch live streams and uploads. I know Craig said earlier we need some 15-minute updates sometimes, like a, like a highlight series for these live streams. I'll do my best. Everything just takes a lot of work and a lot of time, but that is a good idea. So I'll do my best with that as well. Thank you, mods. Thank you, patrons. Thank you, members. Uh, I will see you all later. And thank you to everyone who was here today. Have a great day. Enjoy the World Cup if you are watching. And I'll probably see you, I don't know, if there's more news, you know I'm going to see you. I'm keeping you posted. I'm as invested in this case as you are. I'm so curious. It's so scary. It's like, who could have done this? What is going on? So I'll keep you posted. Okay, everyone. Bye.